that anytime he goes back to his home place, the people will be encouraging him and telling him, well, don't let the portion of your, of your father be left empty. Come and do something. Come and do something. He said, well, God helped him. He gathered something. And then by the time it was time to do for him to go there and do something. He said, the same people who were telling him, come and do something. He brought the people, the workmen that would work with for him. He said, the same people were now coming to say, well, this is when the people were to start marking out, say, no, this place does not belong to you. It doesn't belong to your father. The, uh, these same people that were inviting me to come. He said, suddenly, he was, there was a change, but there was this force of courage of, I won't give up. I have a portion here. He said, he now went and went and invited one of his, he didn't tell them what he was going to do. He now went and invited one of his aunt, someone who grew up, I mean, who knows. He said, he didn't tell her what she was coming to do the, the following day. He said, when the lady, the woman got there, he said, okay, you know, my own father's portion in this place, show me. He said, immediately the woman said, this is your father's portion. Every other person went back. Everything threatening your existence, as you hold on to the Lord, courageously, the Lord will silence them for you. I said, the Lord is silencing them for you. In the name of Jesus. Why do we need courage? Number two, in order to silence every opposition. If you go through that scripture in Joshua 1, 5 to 9, he said, no one will be able to stand against you. But that support is there. But you need courage. Let me talk to yourself and say, I need courage. Uh -huh. Talk to somebody else and say, you need courage. Uh oh, talk to somebody else and say, you need courage. There is, there is someone who came here sometimes, I think she just knew us when we were in um, Jesus' house. Because I, I never knew her. And um, she said to me, Pastor, she's been writing this professional exam as an accountant. And once she writes the exam, she says that she had somebody that was also working with her in the same organization. Once she goes for the exams, the, after the exam, that she will have a dream and see this person, the result will come out, there will always be something. And then she had the, the last, she never gave up. One day we did a program here after the, after the meeting, and she came and she knelt down, we agreed together, we prayed. After that, she went and wrote the same exam. And she's now a qualified chartered accountant. I don't, she never gave up. I don't know who you are. You are on the brink of giving up. The Lord has sent me to you this morning. Don't give up. I said the Lord has sent me with a word of encouragement to you this morning. You know, someone say, ah, well, pastor, you don't understand. I have tried severally. I think it's Abraham Lincoln. How many times did he try to become the to 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 win to to win as the president of America, and he never gave up until he got it. There is someone under the sound of my voice this morning. The Lord is asking me to say to speak into your life. Don't give up. Don't don't check it out. Don't give up. Your victory is around the corner. In the name of Jesus. Number three, why do we need courage? In order to overcome hindrances and obstacles. Every opportunity is confronted with opposition. Every opportunity is confronted with oppositions. There is no opportunity without opposition. That is why there is no land without a giant. One of our, our brother, a pastor, one of the, the, 
um, uh, a pastor who led us in the open heavens this morning said God can see that's the thing the topic of the open heavens and he was talking to us about something happening in his, in his profession how people are just moving moving from this part of the world in search of greener pasture and in the words of my father and the Lord he says there is no land without a giant hello there is no land without a giant so wherever you are be ready to confront every opposition and you need the force of courage number four in order for us why do we need courage in order for us to enjoy fulfillment and performances of God's promises he has promised God is not a man his words will surely come to pass God is not a man that he should lie neither the son of man that he should repent but you and I we need courage to enjoy will you say I need courage and lastly for this morning why do I need courage in order for me to possess my possessions in that scripture that we read in Romans chapter 8 it says we are joint heirs so I conclude this morning on the enforcing your breakthrough with the force of courage how then can I encourage myself you are talking about the force of courage it's so powerful how then can I encourage myself first Samuel chapter 17 verse number 9, 29 when David was going to face Goliath first Samuel 17 29 and David said what have I now done is there not a cause so number one thing is that for us to encourage ourselves you must know that there is always a cause there is a purpose there is a reason there is a cause and as we walk in this understanding that there is a cause and what is the cause the cause is to bring glory to the name of the Lord Romans chapter 8 verse number 28 the Bible says for we know with all degree of certainty that all things work together <laughs> all things work together for good to them that love God to them who are called according to his purpose you know that songwriter says is intentional all things are working together for my good lift up your right hand and say it is working together uh oh it is working together just for my good and I will hold on unto the Lord until he brings the good into my life I will hold on unto the Lord until his good springs forth in my life I see the good of the Lord springing forth in your life I see the good of the Lord springing forth in your hope in the name of Jesus number two how do I encourage myself in the Lord? 1 Samuel chapter 17, verse 32 to 36. Reflect on past victories. Reflect of pa on past victories and divine support. Always think back, you know, if you look at the God who gave you the victory of number one, he gave you the victory in number two, gave you the victory in number three, gave you the victory in number four, gave you the victory in number five, gave you the victory in number six, he's more than able to give you the victory in number seven. He's more than able to bring the victory of number eight. Number seven is the number of perfection. Number eight is the number of new beginning. I don't know who you are in church this morning waiting on God to usher you to a new beginning as you reflect on past victories of him I see him like he did for David when you go home read the whole of uh, first Samuel chapter 17 it is the chronicle of unusual victories and what David did was to begin to recount 
He said, oh, I kept my father's sheep. The lion came. I tore him. The bear came. You know, the bear is, 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 is a false friend. He's a false friend. Even Mika came. I hear in my spirit, the Lord is releasing victory into somebody's life. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. How do I encourage myself? Number three. First Samuel chapter 17 verse number 37. Reassure yourself. Reassure yourself of unceasing support of the Lord. Reassure yourself. That's what David did. He said, the Lord that delivered me out of the paw of the lion and out of the paw of the bear, he will deliver me out of the hand of this Philistine. And when he said that, the king, he didn't have any choice. And he, he, the king now reinstated that support again. And said, and Saul said unto David, go and the Lord be with thee. Go and the Lord be with thee. What David said was to, first of all, he reassured himself of unceasing support from the Lord. And he said, ah, if the Lord is with, is with you, just go. Victory is, is sure. Lift up your right hand and say, victory is sure. Victory is sure. Victory is sure. Victory is sure. For, me, For me, on every side, in every way, in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. How do I encourage myself? in the Lord number four this morning as you reassure yourself of, of, of the support of the Lord then go ahead give him thanks and praise him give him thanks and praise him I mean after reassuring yourself give him thanks you know thanksgiving is the food of God Psalm 50 from verse 7 to 15 is the food of God he said, give him thanks. Just thank him. And appreciate him for all that he has done. And then, number five, just rejoice in his victory. When the victory is not even there yet, go ahead rejoice. It. Go ahead celebrate. That's what David did. He saw the ark of the covenant afar off. And he began to thank the Lord. He began to celebrate nothing could stop him. Nothing will be able to stop you. I said nothing will be able to stop you. This morning will you stand to your feet everyone and just bless the name of the Lord and just give him thanks and give him praise and then I'll be encouraged this morning. Lift up your two hands to the Lord and just thank him anyhow. Thank him for past victories. I don't know what you are going through right now. I don't know what the situation. I don't know what the circumstance. I don't know what is surrounding you but I know that there is a God who never fails. You know that songwriter says, I have a father who will never, never fail me. I have a father who will never, never fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never, never fail me. Rock of ages. Never, 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 never fail. I have a father who will never, never fail me. I have a father who will never, never fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never, never fail me. Rock of ages. Never, 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 never fail. Who will never, never fail me? I have a father who will never, ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never, ever fail me. Rock of ages. Never, 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 never fail. Who will never ever fail me? I have a father who will never ever fail me. I have a father who will never ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever fail me. Rock of ages, never ever, never never fail me. Rock of ages, never ever, never never fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never ever
All eyes closed, I want to I would like to pray specially for a group of persons. Number one group, you want to make sure that he is your father and your father indeed. You know, there are some people they say, Oh, that's my father. They say, No, I'm not, I'm not your father. Like even during the solemn assembly, that the Jesus says, Oh, somebody say, Oh, this person, this person, he said, No, he is not his father, he's not the father of a demon. So, but you are here this morning and you say, oh, yes, I want to make sure, assurance doubly sure that you are my father. That's the first group I would like to call. Number two group, you are here this morning. You are just on a brink. You are actually downcast and discouraged. But this morning, I want to join my faith with yours. Their courage will rise. You know, David in 1 Samuel chapter 30, the Bible says he looked at all the situations and circumstances around him and he wept. This is a man that has enjoyed victory. He wept, he cried until there was no more strength. You, do you? Do, that's, 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 uh, that's a height of sorrow. But suddenly, the Bible says he encouraged himself in the Lord. 1 Samuel chapter 30 verse number 6. And something began to happen. The moment he left that place, he began to be guided on the path of victory. There is someone in this encounter this morning. You are actually downcast. You are discouraged. But as we agree together this morning on this altar, as you leave from this service, you will begin to see the Lord like never before i would also like to pray with such a person this morning wherever you are you belong to any of these two groups will you quickly come before the altar and we'll agree together this morning thank you father you are assuring yourself you are saying father i truly want to make you my father number two group you are saying lord i just need to be encouraged you are downcast you are discouraged you are just downcast. You are discouraged. This morning, the Lord wants to breathe a breath, his own breath, his breath of courage, his breath of courage, as he did with David, and he opened David's eyes. Maybe something or something, whatever it is this morning, Lord, we give you praise this morning and we worship you. We give you all the glory. Thank you because you are our father. Behold, all of these your children standing before your altar. Whatsoever is the need of their life. The Bible says David encouraged himself in the Lord. As many as are downcast, discouraged, those that are here and those that are also joining us online from wherever they are joining from, Jehovah will ask as the force of courage rose in the heart of David. Oh yes, I'd like to pray for a third group. You are also here, you are believing the Lord to carry you through a particular situation at this time. You are believing him for a breakthrough that will bring your breaking forth, your manifestation, wherever you are. Quickly come also and join this team. Quickly come, quickly come, quickly come, quickly come. You are believing him Yes, you are believing him. Thank you, Father. Lord, I ask, oh God, that everyone believing you for a breaking through, that we bring the breaking forth by the authority of your word in Romans 8, 19. The word of the Lord says, the whole creature waited for the manifestation of the sons and daughters of God. This is the twelfth day in this third month. Oh God, God the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we invite you to combine together to bring the breakthrough that we manifest in the breaking forth and your name glorified. We just give you praise. We 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 give you praise. We, you praise. we, you praise. we agree together on this altar 
everyone believing the Lord for a breaking through and a breaking forth. As David saw the ark of the covenant afar off, and he danced, he rejoiced. Nothing could stop him. That is our portion this morning. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you praise and glory and honor. And we say, blessed be your name. Lord, we return to, we, re, we promise you that we shall return to you all the glory. As David did, and your name glorified forever. Thank you, eternal Father. Blessed be your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we are praying. I have a father who will never, never fail me. I have a father who will never, ever fail me. Jesus is my father. He will never, ever fail me. Rock of ages, never, 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 never fail. I have a father who will never, ever fail me. Never, never fail. I have a father who will never, ever fail. Jesus is my father. He will never, ever fail. Rock of ages, never, ever fail. Never, never fail. I have a father who will never, ever fail. I have a father who will never, ever fail. Aren't you excited? Jesus is my father. He will never, ever fail. excited that I have a father who can never, never fail. You know, your biological father can deny you. But there is a father who never forgets you. Hallelujah. That's what Isaiah chapter 49 verse 15 to 16 says. It says, it's possible for mothers to forget the, the babies that sucked their breast. They carried in their womb, sucked their breast. But I will not forget you. Let me talk to your neighbor and say, he has not forgotten me, you know. Oh, oh, see the way you're saying it. He has not forgotten me, you know. All right, talk to somebody else and say, he has not forgotten you, you know. Hallelujah. God bless you. You may please be seated. Praise the name of the Lord. If you are excited in the presence of the Lord, filled with the joy of the Lord, let's celebrate him this morning. Hallelujah. Glory be to the name of the Lord. Now, um, before we we'll go on to take our offering, um, just have a few very important announcements. It's already counted down to Easter. It's one month. In one month's time, will be an Easter. Are you excited? Are you excited? And Easter this year, here in the, the Redeemed Christian Church of God, the King's Palace, is going to be a very special one. It's going to be an awesomely, awesomely special one. The Easter Sunday will be preceded, will be preceded with our quarterly Thanksgiving, and then we will now go to Easter Sunday. That's awesome. Praise the name of the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So, um, yes, um, those of us born in the month of March, um, we did our, we were prayed for last Sunday in church. Am I right? So, um, we are going to begin something. All of us born in the month of March, we are going to begin something. That is, we are going to partner together with the church to begin to organize crusades in our neighborhood. So that is going to, from the month of April, May, and June, we will have at least two neighborhood crusades. Praise the name of the Lord. So all those from January 
February and March. They can, they can jo come and join those of us in March. So praise the Lord. Praise the name of the Lord. So by next Sunday, we'll be announcing where we'll be going. So apart from 